St. Bede's to the sixth Sunday after Pentecost. Well, this Sunday Jesus visits Martha and Mary in their home. Yes, and Martha wants to make her home presentable to Jesus, and Mary is not helping. This makes Martha very angry because Mary is just listening to Jesus and not helping her with all the work that needs to be done. Okay, Sherry, mm -hmm. who do you relate to, Martha or Mary? Well, I relate to Martha because like Martha, I want my home presentable to guests that come in. I want it clean. I want food on the table. Um, so that's mine. What's yours? Unfortunately. <laughs> me too. Yeah. And unfortunately, we all kind of have to ask ourselves, do we have our priorities in order? Like Martha, we're all kind of anxious about many things. And are we like Martha that way? Or like Mary, we really ought to be focused on Jesus and spending time in his presence. So we have to ask ourselves, have we put devotion to Christ and his word first? Or are we more concerned about doing good deeds? That's kind of a rough question. Give us something to think about this week. It will give us something to think mm -hmm. about. Uh, and there are the bells again. Yeah. So you know what that means. Be, Be bites. bites. B was declared a rare doctor of the church, the only Englishman so honored and elevated to sainthood by Pope Leo XIII in 1899. His feast day is now May the 25th, his date of birth. Bede is the only Englishman mentioned by Dante in his Paradiso. Bede is frequently depicted in medieval artworks as an old monk writing with a quill and studying a book as the teacher of more than 600 students. Or holding up a pitcher with a light from heaven falling on him. St. Boniface called him the light of the church lit by the Holy Spirit. Or being supported by monks as he is dying. The Old Testament comes from Amos. This is what the Lord God showed me, a basket of summer fruit. He said, Amos, what do you see? And I said, a basket of summer fruit. Then the Lord said to me, The end has come upon my people Israel. I will never again pass them by. The songs of the temple shall become wailings in that day, says the Lord God. The dead bodies shall be many, cast out in every place. Be silent. Hear this, you that trample on the needy and bring to ruin the poor of the land, saying, when will the new moon be over so that we can sell grain? And the Sabbath, so that we may offer wheat for sale. We will make the ephah small and the shekel great, and practice deceit with false balances, buying the poor for silver, and the needy for a pair of sandals, and selling the sweepings of the wheat. The Lord has sworn by the pride of Jacob, Surely I will never forget any of their deeds. Shall not the land tremble on this account, and every one mourn who lives in it, and all of it rise like the Nile, and be tossed about and sink again like the Nile in Egypt? On, the, on that day, says the Lord God, I will make the sun go down at noon, and darken the earth in broad daylight. I will turn your feasts into mourning, and all your songs into lamentations. I will bring sackcloth on all loins, and baldness on every head. I will make it like the morning for an only sun, and the end of it like a bitter day. The time is surely coming, says the Lord God, when I will send a famine on the land, not a famine of bread or a thirst for water, 
but of hearing the word of the Lord. They shall wander from sea to sea and from north to east. They shall run to and fro seeking the word of the Lord, but they shall not find it. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The song comes to us from chapter 52. You tyrant, why do you boast of wickedness against the godly all day long? You plot ruin, your tongue is like a sharpened razor, O oh, worker of deception. You love evil more than good, and lying more than speaking the truth. You love all words that hurt, O oh, you deceitful tongue. O oh, that God would demolish you utterly, topple you, and snatch you from your dwelling, and root you out of the land of the living. The righteous shall see and tremble, and they shall laugh at him, saying, This is the one who did not take God for a refuge, but trusted in great wealth and relied upon wickedness. But I am like a green olive tree in the house of God. I trust in the mercy of God forever and ever. I will give you thanks for what you have done, and declare the goodness of your name in the presence of the godly. The epistle this week is from Colossians. Christ Jesus is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of all creation. For in him all things in heaven and on earth were created, things visible and invisible, whether thrones or dominions or rulers or powers. All things have been created through him and for him. He himself is before all things, and in him all things hold together. He is the head of the body, the church. He is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead, so that he might come to have first place in everything. For in him all the fullness of God was pleased to dwell, and through him God was pleased to reconcile to himself all things, whether on earth or in heaven, by making peace through the blood of his cross. And you, who were once estranged and hostile in mind, doing evil deeds, he has now reconciled in his fleshly body through death, so as to present you holy and blameless and irreproachable before him provided that you continue securely established and steadfast in the faith, without shifting from the hope promised by the gospel that you heard, which has been proclaimed to every creature under heaven. I, Paul, became a servant of this gospel. I am now rejoicing in my sufferings for your sake, and in my flesh... I am completing that is lacking in Christ's afflictions for the sake of his body. That is the church. I became its servant according to God's commission that was given to me for you to make the word of God fully known, the mystery that has been hidden through, throughout the ages and generations but has now been revealed to his saints. To them God chose to make known how great among the Gentiles are the riches of the glory of his mystery, which is Christ in you, the hope of glory. It is he whom we proclaim, warning everyone and teaching everyone in all wisdom, so that we may present everyone mature in Christ. The Word of the Lord. Hello, St. Beats. Father Joe again. Uh, I want to begin by saying uh, my condolences to those who uh, have a loss regarding Sandy at Lightfoot. God be with you and God comfort you. And we know that she is well, having entered into that life that has no end. And now uh, let us proceed with today's lessons. And... Um, I want to begin with 
the reading uh, from the collect. Almighty God, the fountain of all wisdom, you know our necessities before we ask and our ignorance in asking. Have compassion on our weakness and mercifully give us those things which for our unworthiness we dare not and for our blindness we cannot ask. Through the worthiness of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please take that collect to heart, particularly the part that goes, our unworthiness we dare not and our for our blindness we cannot ask, because we do go around sometimes blind to the obvious. Um, I want to start with the reading from Amos. Now, you, you do know that, I hope, maybe you don't. Anyway, I'll tell you. <laughs> Amos uh, means burden. His real name is Burden, and he has a huge burden. He is from the tribe of Judah. In fact, south of Jerusalem, and God sends them up to Israel. And Israel and Judah were not having good relationships at that time. And he said, I've got to go because God has sent me. And so he did. And we heard some of his story last week. Now, he was a Judean businessman, and he was called by God to tell the truth to the people of Israel. You see, part of what the church is about is to speak the truth to power. And this is exactly what Amos was doing. And we can see um, <laughs> this. Hear this, you that trample our needy and bring to ruin the poor of the land, saying, when will the new moon be over so that we may sell grain? In other words, when are all these religious festivals and Sabbaths? They're cutting into our profits. Let's stay open all the time. And then, we will deal with false balances, buying the poor for silver and the needy for a pair of sandals. One of the commerces that the rich were involved in was to bail out a person in debt, i.e. enslave them. And then they would sell the rights to that person to someone else for a tidy profit. Slavery, by any other name, is slavery. If this doesn't sound a lot like our contemporary society, I don't know what does. We, the rich get richer, the poor get poorer. Likewise, in Amos's day. And I want to contrast that with what God wants from us beyond being an Amos, a burden bearer, speaking truth to power. Paul says, Jesus is the image of the invisible God. All things have been created through him and for him. For in him all the fullness of God was pleased to dwell, and through him God was pleased to reconcile to himself all things, whether on earth or in heaven, by making peace through the blood of his cross. This humble Jewish carpenter, formerly known as the king of the universe and who has taken on our humanity to live our lives, to give himself for us so that we might not have everlasting death, but rather everlasting life. That is the scope of God's love for us, that he gives himself so that you and I are bailed out. No slavery here. We are set free by this transaction. Let me just say that in as clear terms as I can. We have been set free at great cost to God. Now, what is left for us to do? Well, Jesus describes that in this uh, gospel As Jesus and his disciples went on their way, Jesus entered a village where a woman named Martha welcomed him into her home. She had a sister named Mary who sat at the Lord's feet and listened to what he was saying. But Martha was distracted by her many tasks, so she came to him and asked, Lord, do you not care that my sister has left me to do all the work by myself? Tell her then to help me. 
But the Lord answered her, Martha, 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 you are worried and distracted by many things. There is need of only one thing. Mary has chosen the better part, which will not be taken away from her. Wow. Do you ever get distracted? Do I ever get distracted by our busyness? Maybe it has to do with work. Maybe it has to do with family. Maybe it has to do with church even. Yeah, we do get distracted, don't we? And we don't take the time to listen. Listen, Jesus. Paid, Mary paid attention because Jesus' message is so important. Not only does he set us free, but he says to you and to me, and he lays a burden on you and me, as Amos assumed that burden as well, as you do it to the least of these, you do it to me. If you have two coats, share one. Bring the homeless into your home. Love your enemies. Those are heavy charges, my friends. But it is what we are called to do and to be. Ah, <sighs> the innocent that suffer in this world. We must bring compassion and love and care and nurture to them. No matter who it is we have to speak up to. Amen? Amen. Amen.